Brought to you by Almond Auctions, the worldwide leader in antique tractor auctions. It's clear right from the start. When you pull in the driveway of this Francisville, Indiana farm, you know you're entering prairie gold country. But Dick Lowry is more than just your typical Minneapolis Moline enthusiast. Well, this building here is where I keep the, uh, the older ones, the later, the old models in here. And uh, there's a lot of mufflers sticking up when you go in here, uh, probably about 45, at least 45. Well, I got some of the later model stuff in this building and uh, stuff that I use more often and uh, kind of forget what all's in here. But uh, this is kind of my shed I work all of, my uh, farming tractors. Uh, it's pretty well full also. Yes, Dick Lowry has a lot of tractors, 96 to be exact, and every one of them a Minneapolis Moline. It's a collection that's earned him a reputation among tractor enthusiasts around the country. Probably a, a long way from here even, people know me as a Moline man, uh, uh, and uh, we don't uh, uh, mess with the computer, and, uh, but people all over the country uh, know the Moline guy at Francisville, Indiana. I don't know, word gets out, I guess. One of the prizes of this massive Minimo collection is a rare two-star crawler, one of only 50 to roll off the line in 1958. This one made its way to the Hoosier State from the Great Plains of Kansas. They were all gasoline, and uh, they were either with a dozer blade on them or a bucket, and I only know of uh, about four of these with a bucket on, and this was the first one built with a bucket on. The serial number says number one on this one. As the first crawler built with a bucket loader, this is a rare machine indeed, but it still had to wait its turn to be made new again. It sat out here beside my building for probably two years, and I'd uh, soak in the, the cylinders trying to get it to, uh, to free up, and, and, and it never was going to free up, but it was, the cylinders were full of water, and uh, I'd put blaster and brake fluid and stuff in them, but uh, when I uh, got, got the uh, blocks off of it, bins they were clear full of water, uh, uh, they weren't rusty whatsoever, and I just uh, took them and cleaned them up and honed them and put new rings, and, uh, and the thing just runs super good. Dick's years of experience working on Minneapolis Molines did little to prepare him for the damaged sheet metal, the homemade radiator, and seized engine that he'd encounter when bringing new life to this tractor. Well, to uh, uh, take this engine out is quite a chore. Uh, you, you take all this heavy casting off of the front and take the sheet metal off, and, uh, and then you can take your radiator out, and then um, you got a few bolts to take that engine out, and I had to take it out to read uh, to overhaul it, and uh, it's really tight quarters to do all of that. And uh, I blasted it and uh, uh, got everything uh, repaired on it and uh, blasted it, and then I uh, painted it, and I was holding off on the bucket to paint, and uh, my wife said, you just go ahead and paint that bucket. She knew kind of thought what I had in mind. I was wanting to play with it. But I went ahead and painted the tracks and the bucket, so I've never actually used it any, just show it, I guess. Family plays an important role in maintaining these Molines. Dick's wife, Martha, as well as his sons and grandsons all get involved. Well, it's kind of a family thing. My wife, she's uh, with me a lot and uh, uh, got us, uh, my sons are kind of interested and they give me a hand when I need it and a uh, couple grandsons that, that help me. And uh, so that makes it more a lot more fun, I guess, with uh, more interest in it. And uh, we just enjoy it. I, I always say it's a good therapy for me. Nothing is more fun than taking a newly restored tractor out for a drive. This crawler comes equipped with a 57 horsepower, 206 cubic inch gas powered engine. It's easy to drive. You, you got your brake and your clutches all on one lever, the, the steering and, uh, uh, and your brakes is all with just one lever. You put it in a a gear uh, forward or backwards, you got uh, five speeds and uh, put it in whatever select what speed you want and, uh, and uh, move a lever for forward and a lever and pull it back for a reverse 
and uh, and you just steer it with those two uh, uh, levers. Well, this here lever uh, raises and lowers your bucket, and this lever here does the tilting or dumping of the bucket, and this lever here is uh, for another outlet, your hydraulic outlets in the rear, and uh, that's uh, the three outlets you got for your hydraulic. In spite of its small size, this crawler weighs in at over five and a half tons, and it can still handle its share of the work. It's got pretty good sized cylinders under it, and that bucket is quite large for no uh, bigger than this crawler is, and uh, it can lift a pretty good load. Uh, I'm a little surprised it's that big a bucket, but I've I got no problem uh, with that size of bucket on it. Minneapolis Molines are still working hard on the Lowry Farm today. For Dick, who took the wheel of his first Moline in 1946, preserving that prairie gold heritage is a way of life. I guess I'm kind of a fanatic uh, uh, getting them uh, original in everything working on them. The, the electrical, the, the fuel, and the right nuts and bolts, and uh, the right parts on them, and put them, fix them back right, and it just kind of gives them new life. And uh, 50 years from now, if they're still around, they'll, they'll understand what they were supposed to be like when they were new.